Now we calculated and we found that we think that today 60% of US individuals with European heritage are subject, like this technique can work and, and identify a third cousin for them. Was it 60% you think? 60% of the US. So about uh, two thirds of the US. Of the US, like Europeans, like right. European heritage. So it's like it's, they're already two thir thirds of the population. So two thirds of two thirds. Although they have a fair chance, you know, it, it's, it works also for Afro Americans. It's not the same level, but it, it, I think that ch the, based on calculation, we talk about 30% chance. Mm -hmm. And it works for other types of, of ethnicities. Uh, I think we found the lowest success rate for Asian in our database. But you know that it, it will it will change as, as also more people take the test. Right, more people in every different yeah, heritage. Yeah, exactly. Larger pool. Yeah. So we this future means now. Now here is the thing, and this is something that I am bothered by. I I don't think the police is the problem here. Yeah, it's very easy, you know, to cover like to vilify the police, and, and there are many problems with the police. But I think you know the police in general. What are we talking about? So they will start to use it to, for what? For, for people that with uh, um, no parking tickets? Probably not, right? Yeah. Like the worst it's case for the... It's too expensive. It's too expensive, right? But the, let's say the worst case for the police, like, no, that for police perspective is that use it to identify people in political demonstration. This is probably a big no-no. But I think this is like quite far down the road that we're not there yet. The problem is that if this technique can be used by Everyone, what about foreign players? Because foreign players will not adhere to, you know, we can put whatever terms of use we want, right. but they don't adhere to terms of use. The police m might adhere to terms of use. I'm not sure that, you know, any foreign player, I'm sure that foreign player will not say, oh, that's like, they, they don't allow that. Right. Oh, sure. cancel the operation, cancel everything, bring them back to the base, you know. No, the thing is that what we need to think is that it creates, especially for the U.S., because these databases are mainly U.S. databases, it creates some asymmetry. It means that a foreign player can cast genetic surveillance on large part of the U.S. population, and what is the meaning for the ability of the of, of U.S. government to operate, let's say, in covert operations, for instance. Um, so... I'm, this is a concern if yeah. these adversaries of the U.S., you know, they can now, let's say there is a, some covert operation of U.S. forces, it's very hard not to leave behind your DNA, right? You, if you pee in these operations and, and you don't take, you know, or, or you just sw even sweat and touch something, there is a chance that you will leave your DNA behind. And in this case, the ability to go and, and with a small database to nearly identify everyone in this population, in the US population, means that these people that were part of the operation are now subject to be identified. Now, the whole point of this operation is that they cannot be identified because it creates risk for them, for them, right. for their families. See what the Russians did for their own, like spies that went, you know, like flipped sides. Like this is the one in, in the UK, right? They, it's like it was not even a big spy. It was a very small fish and still they, it was worth, for, for them it was worth, yeah. Yeah. Worth, worth the to actually invest and send these like to tourists with a nerve agent, and so again, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to be like fear monger or something like that, but I just want to be realistic about things and and to say and, but we think that we can do something about it. I think there is a mitigation scheme that if all companies will adopt, we can really prevent this type of harmful consequences. And what, what kind of steps would this include? It's 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 like surprisingly simple. What if all companies will, before they give the users their, even labs, right, not just companies, but it can, can be just the companies for this thing to work, that before they give the user the raw genetic data, which is just a text file, they will sign the file with a cryptographic key. So the file is still a plain text, mm -hmm. but you have another line that's with gibberish that signed by the company. Now, when this file is uploaded to JetMatch, Curtis that was here, can now look at the signature and run very quick algorithm that says the file was not tempered, the signature is valid, and it belongs to company X. Hmm. If this is the case, JetMatch will process the file. Seamless for the user. If this operation takes like a fraction of a second, the user will not even know that there is something new about JetMatch. If it doesn't have the signature, you serve a different web page for the user. And in this web page, you can say, like 
if like who exactly you are. Maybe it's some user that tempered the file and said, please get your data from, from the company again. Right. If you are a police, you know, if and, and JetMatch wants to support the police, you have a different onboarding process. You put maybe some paperwork with the police to say that, you know, represent that you're searching for the person that you're saying that you're present that, that you're searching. Some some legal work, some streamlined legal work, not like every time to build this contract from scratch. But some of the on onboarding process. And if it's not the police and it's not if it's not a normal user and it's um whatever person from the KGB or whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> Probably it will not reach we to jet match. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Yes. it says KGB because they don't exist anymore, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but it's whatever person from from foreign intelligence, you know, that an adversary of the U.S. They can just, you know, they probably they will not reach out to jet match. But now they kind of like be much more complicated for them to get their data. Right. This is almost like a, a, a genotyping tamper seal. It's also interesting, you know, for my heritage to take this type of study, and you see this was done with you know, the blessing of the CEO, of the board, of, of like my heritage employees. Now, of course, it, it was because I'm, I'm interested in genetic privacy, but but the point here was that it's people vilify Silicon Valley on just high tech company. You know, we we are in Israel, but we think ourselves as a Silicon Valley company right. to some extent, right? And that oh, they kind of like you know they just like moving forward. They don't take any ethical thinking about what they do they and, and here we kind of like you know here's a company that is actually thinking about you know what we do how to protect our users how to create sustainability and and also importantly we do it not five years after the first case was in the news but we do it like immediately a week after the first case we start working on this on this manuscript Be because the, the the horses are still in the barn right and then they didn't left the barn yet so there is things that we can do to prevent some misuse five to ten years from now. And, and important, I want to emphasize that we are now building the infrastructure for the next decade for genomics. This is just the beginning. What we see, this is just you know we we genotype how many like 17 million people all over the world. It's nothing, yeah. right? We're building this thing now. Yeah, yeah, it's dropping the bucket. So we are building now the infrastructure. So this is important to think about these issues right now.